Hello everybody, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the Canyon Spectral AL 6.0. Now to start off this video, we're gonna talk about some of the unique features on the Spectral and where it sits in the broader Canyon full suspension lineup. Then we're gonna go into some detail about the components strapped to this bike and how we set it up for the past couple of months of riding. And finally, and most importantly, I'm gonna talk about how this bike rides on the trail. We're gonna talk about what it does well, what it doesn't do so well, and who it's actually designed for. Now, before we go any further, if you haven't joined us already on Flow Mountain Bike, consider hitting that subscribe button just down there because we have plenty more videos coming your way in the near future. Okie doke, so the Spectral is Canyon's aggressive long travel trail bike. It sits between the 130mm travel Neuron trail bike and the 150mm travel Strive Enduro race bike. It's one of Canyon's most popular models. There are 12 different spec options in the Spectral range, starting from around $2,700 and going all the way up to over 10 grand for the top of the range model. Now this bike here is the Spectral AL 6.0. It is the top of the range spec with the aluminium frame. And this bike sells for $3,649 plus shipping. So what makes it special? Well, it's pretty hard to discuss any Canyon mountain bike without mentioning the parts per dollarometer. And with this bike, it is no exception. What you're getting for under four grand is pretty bonkers to be perfectly honest. We've got a Fox 36 fork on the front, a piggyback shock on the back, DT Swiss wheels and High Zoot 3C Maxxis tires. We can't find really any other bike on the market for under four grand that comes with that kind of package for your money. Add in the wide bars, short stem, drop post, and big brake rotors, and you've got a bike that looks like it's ready for some seriously rowdy riding. Now, of course, that means nothing if all those nice parts are strapped to a poor quality frame, but it seems Canyon have that stitched up too. This is the cheap alloy frame, but it very much follows the same form and function as the higher end carbon frame. So we've got a very similar shape, same geometry, same four bar triple phase suspension design, which is what Canyon refers to it as. And that means we've got clearance for a water bottle inside the main frame. We've got really nice bolt on shields for the pivot bearings. We've got an internal seat post wedge for adjusting the saddle height, one of my favorite features, the Quixel rear through axle, which is basically a pop-out quick release lever for the rear wheel. And we've also got the cable tunnel underneath the down tube. Now this is Canyon's way of routing the cables externally on this bike, but keeping them hidden away so it looks very clean. We've got bolt-on plates underneath the down tube, which capture the cables and the rear brake hose and give it a really clean aesthetic. But when it comes time to work on the bike, you can undo those bolts, take off those plates, and you've got access to the cables within. Aside from keeping it very neat and tidy, it also gives the down tube a bit of extra protection, which is nice. Okay, how we set up this bike for testing. At 175 centimeters tall, I fit a medium in most brands, and that's exactly what I've gone for here in the Spectral. It's a relatively comfortable bike to ride. It's got a 440 mil reach measurement, which by today's standards isn't the longest. There are certainly brands that are going much longer in their top tube lengths. But the seat angle isn't particularly steep, so it helps to keep the cockpit relatively open. I should point out the Canyon's actually put on slightly wider bars this year and a slightly longer stem. That's also helped to open up the, uh, the effective cockpit reach on the new Spectral. I must say I do like the Canyon own branded cockpit. I quite like the bars, stem. The grips are also really good too. They're relatively thin, but they've got a nice pattern, a soft, sticky compound, so they feel really good. Um, I can't say the same thing about the SDG saddle. Now, I normally wouldn't point that out, but this being a direct consumer brand, there's no option to swap that saddle out at the point of purchase. So you're kind of stuck with it unless you go out and buy another saddle to put in its place. As for suspension setup, at around 68 kilos, I put in 67 PSI into the Fox 36 fork on the front. I ran the rebound at 10 clicks off the slower setting and the blue compression dial up here, I ran that about halfway just to give it a little bit of resistance under brake dive. Once I had the fork set up to begin with, I didn't have to touch it for the remainder of the test. This is a really good performer, nice and stiff chassis, really active, really supple. And although it has that cheaper grip damper, the performance on rough, fast, high-speed terrain is very, very good. Now, as for the rear shock, Canyon recommends a sag range between 25 and 30%. And in my experience, going from one to the other does change the suspension performance quite a bit. It kind of changes the bike's overall character too. So it's worth playing around with if you do end up owning one of these bikes. 
To begin with, I ran 30% sag, which at my weight, that put me at 195 PSI in the air spring. The shock does feel a little bit soft and sticky out of the box, so I ran the rebound damping at four clicks off the fastest setting to help it recover on high-speed chatter bumps. The only other thing I did to this bike out of the box was to set it up tubeless. It does come with tubes installed, but the rims and tires are tubeless compatible. You will have to BYO tubeless valves and sealant though. Once I got rid of those tubes, I set up the front tire at 23 PSI and the rear tire at 27 PSI. Complete weight for this bike without pedals and with it set up tubeless was 14.32 kilograms. So what does the Canyon Spectral do well? Well, with those sticky tires and that active suspension design, the Spectral hoovers up trail irregularities with incredible ease. This bike is very, very grounded, very supple, very comfortable to ride as well. The rear suspension is quite floaty. That's something I noticed on really chundery high-speed descents. It's a bike that can be ridden very, very hard and very, very fast. It's also a bike that wants to be ridden hard and fast. Certainly with the weight of this bike and with that active suspension design, the slack geometry, it's not not a natural climber. I will get onto that point in just a moment. It's also one of the best jumping bikes I've ridden for quite some time. It's got a lot of pop and playfulness to it. Certainly the smaller 27.5 inch wheels have a lot to do with that. It's also quite short in the back end. The chainstay length is only 430 millimeters, so the rear wheel is tucked in really nice and close to the bottom bracket. The BB is also quite low as well, so you combine that with the relatively short reach and the tall front end. And this is a bike that really loves kind of pulling up the front wheel and pulling popping off lips and jumps, very enthusiastic in the air. With those nice heavy wheels and tires, it also gives it plenty of stability when you're in the air, and for the most part, a relatively predictable landing. Also with that low bottom bracket and short back end, this is a bike that corners really comfortably. It doesn't require a lot of technique modification for you to get the most out of this bike and to thread it through tight switchback corners. Certainly less than bikes that are much longer than this, um, and also a lot of 29ers in this travel bracket, which can be harder work to kind of maneuver through tighter and twistier trails. The Spectral relishes in that kind of environment. It's very agile, very easy to ride, and it doesn't require a lot of you in terms of weight shifts to kind of um, get it to hook up through the turns. Given this kind of hooligan nature of this bike, if I was gonna own it long term, I'd consider putting a tire insert in the rear tire, because I feel like that rear wheel is not gonna last a very long time with the way that this bike rides and how it encourages you to ride as well. So what does the Spectral struggle with? Well, it's not a natural climbing bike. Certainly with its weight, with its active suspension design, and with the slack geometry, it's not a bike that exactly lives for going uphill, that's for sure. One of the things I picked up early on was just how slow rolling the front tire is. Now I normally get on with Maxxis Minion DHR2 tires really well. It's one of my favorite tread patterns around, but the 3C Max Grip compound that Canyon has specced for the front of the Spectral is the slowest and stickiest rubber compound known to humankind. This tire is really, really slow. In fact, it, it kind of feels like you're pedaling with the brake on. Certainly the first few rides I had on this bike, I was jumping off to check if the brakes were rubbing or if the, there was a slow leak in the tire there was something on this bike that was really slowing it down and it was definitely this front tire. So what I did was I put the firmer Max Terra rear tire onto the front and in its place I put on the Maxxis Dissector which is a new tire from Maxxis. This is a faster rolling tire than the Minion DHR2. Still got good hook up through the turns but a little bit lighter, quite a bit lower in rolling resistance. Definitely injected a lot of speed into this bike and by taking that max grip tire off, certainly improved the rolling resistance on the Spectral. Definitely made it a little bit easier to get up the climbs and certainly lowered that rolling resistance on the flats and intermediate trails too. Even still, it's a relatively slack bike. So for 2019, Canyon has put a bigger fork onto the Spectral. This is 160 millimeters, whereas the 2018 Spectral came with a 150 millimeter travel fork. It has slackened out the head angle. Um, to our measurements, it's around 65 degrees, and that's fantastic for descending and riding kind of rough high-speed trails. But it has also slackened out the seat tube angle, and that puts your weight quite far behind the bottom bracket. Once you factor in the active suspension design and the way that you sit into the travel on the climbs, you do feel quite far over the back of the bike on steep climbs. It's certainly not an efficient pedaling position. I do think Canyon could give the Spectral a steeper seat tube angle, and that would definitely help its climbing abilities to give it a more efficient riding position on the uphills. 
Partway through the test period, I did put a little bit more air pressure into the rear shock. I decreased the sag from 30% to 25%. And this did help with pedaling performance. It gave the Spectral a little bit more efficiency under pedaling, but it also helped with the dynamic climbing position by lifting it out of its travel and helping to push your weight a little bit further over the front wheel. Even still, I was reaching for the blue compression switch on the rear DPX2 shock quite a lot. It's got open, medium, and firm positions on that blue lever, and really for any extent extended climb, I was either in the medium or firm position just to give this bike a little bit more pedal efficiency because out of the box it's not the most enthusiastic bike under pedaling. While 25% sag did improve pedaling performance on the Spectral, it did mean I came nowhere near to hitting full travel on the rear shock. The Spectral has quite a progressive suspension design so in order to access the end of the travel I did end up reducing the volume inside the rear shock air can. Now inside the Fox DPX2 shock, Canyon specs a 0.4 volume spacer. I took this guy out and put in a slightly smaller 0.2 volume spacer. That increased the available air volume inside the air can, and that provides a, a bit more of a linear feel to the suspension, and it kind of unlocked the end of the travel for me. Right, so onto the component highs and lows of the Spectral AL 6.0. Well, I mentioned the suspension before. Um, I'm gonna mention it again. For under four grand, the fact that you get a Fox 36 and a piggyback DPX2 shock is unreal. It's, it's a real big performance enhancer on this bike and it gives a load of high-speed control, it means you can ride this bike really hard, really fast. Canyon also made a smart spec decision by putting a 200mm rotor on the front of this bike. Combined with the four-piston guide R brakes, it gives a little bit more bite, but also a little bit more resistance to fade on long extended descents. Otherwise, the rest of the package was very low fuss. The DT Swiss wheels have been solid. Um, I kind of expected that. They're relatively heavy. These weigh a little bit over 1,900 grams for the pair, um, but they do have a nice tubeless ready rim profile with a 30 mil inner rim width. Gives a really good support for these wide tubeless Maxxis tires. The only thing I'd look at changing if this were my bike is the dropper post. The lever's a bit cheap and wobbly, and the action of the, the post itself is a little bit slow on compression return, certainly compared to a higher quality dropper post say a Fox Transfer or a RockShox Reverb, it is a little bit slow to compress and rebound, but otherwise it was relatively reliable throughout testing. Now a question I've been asked a lot since I've been testing the Spectral is how does this bike compare to the Canyon Neuron and the Canyon Strive? That's a really valid question because there's quite a bit of overlap between those three bikes and indeed there's only 30mm of travel that separate the three. Now the Neuron is a trail bike that I've spent a lot of time on early this year. It's a bike I know really well and I can say it rides very differently to the Spectral. The Neuron is more of a long distance, long legged cross country bike. It's comfortable and easy to ride. It's more efficient, it climbs better. The kinematics on the rear suspension are very different to the Spectral and it doesn't support jumping nearly as well as this bike. The Neuron is more of an all day kind of cross country trail bike and if you're less aggressive, that's definitely the bike to consider out of the two. As for the Strive, it's a little trickier, and that's because the two bikes actually share the same travel. So the Strive also has 160 mil travel fork and 150 mil of travel on the back. Of course, it does have 29 inch wheels though, and it comes with a carbon fiber frame and the shapeshifter suspension design. Now the shapeshifter gives it on the fly adjustable geometry and that helps to improve the Strive's climbing ability compared to the Spectral. It makes it a faster, more efficient machine. And certainly if you're competing in enduro racing, the Strive is the bike to go for. The Spectral is still enduro capable. It's certainly tough enough, that's for sure but it's not a great climbing bike. It's too heavy, too active, and too slack for that. Really what this bike is, is it's a party bike. It's a hooligans bike. It's a bike that thrives on going downhill, preferably at speed on really rough, chundery trails. I think Canyon have done well to showcase the benefits of 27.5 inch wheels in this bike. It's agile, it's easy to ride, it's fun, and if you're the kind of rider that loves pulling manuals, cutties, hitting doubles, drops, jumps, and just generally having a laugh on the trail, then this is a really good option to go for. If you're the kind of rider that's looking to develop that skill set, then the Spectral is certainly tough enough to survive all the mistakes that you're gonna make along the way. Now, if you'd like to read our full review of the 2019 Canyon Spectral AL 6.0, make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com. If you've got any questions for us about this bike, make sure you drop them into the comments section below. Give us the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for plenty more videos coming your way in the near future. Otherwise, that's it from me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Toodaroo!